Hey everyone, this is Tommy from Studio Ultra Mega with another Operation Battle Ready tutorial, episode 29, Green and Other Things. First, I'd like to start with a recommendation uh, for Monument Hobbies Bombwick Igniter line of brushes. These are Kalinsky Sable brushes that hold a really nice point. Loving them so far. Okay, so anyway, uh, we're going to show a few things here. Uh, looking in the background, uh, you're going to be able to see me work with a gradient, and you're going to see more dynamic highlighting and general overhead light source on the front uh, quarter panel area of this bike. Um, and so we've got a few different things to talk about on a couple different levels. So uh, first we're putting a layer of Black Forest Green from scale color all over the entire uh, area. That's gonna be our base. Um, we're first gonna work off of a gradient between a rotty green and black forest green. Uh, you see me mixing it up there. And we're gonna start to give real general broad highlights over the surfaces of the front quarter panel area of this bike. Uh, these are going to be really broad. It's almost like a second base coat. We're only leaving the black forest on the very kind of underneath facets of the bike. So as I'm doing these broad highlights on the uh, top facet, you see that underneath facet that's tucked under there? I still hit the edge uh, with this current highlight color. I wanted to do a tutorial that featured these bold greens from scale color because uh, that can be tricky sometimes to highlight and, and not have it look bad. Uh, natural, uh, you know, greens, uh, olive greens, things like that, uh, army camo greens, uh, those blend real naturally, but a lot, a lot of times bold greens uh, can give you trouble. Um, so using a gradient really helps and there's a lot of going back into the darker color and bringing it back into the highlight color to help blend uh, those steps smoothly. You can see me pulling more of that erati green into the black forest to create the next uh, color up. Uh, you see it's not all that much different, but you gotta take much tinier steps of green. Uh, there wasn't time to address it in the beginning of the video, but the little bottle cap full of uh, white stuff there on my palette, that is matte medium. And especially with scale color, I sometimes like to put a little tiny dab on the tip of my brush uh, to help blend those colors together and it just adds even a little more buttery texture to what's already a very buttery paint. Uh, makes it really nice for blending.
work our way up to uh, using the pure Erati green. And now we're going to start uh, making those highlights much smaller and bringing them tighter to the edges. And again, you'll see here I dip back into the darker color to help with those blends on where, they, where the colors meet. You see there I'm going back down into the black forest green a little bit. And that's all just to smooth out those transitions. See, as we keep building these highlights up we keep favoring the surface areas that would directionally be facing the sky while the uh, surface areas that are facing the base or even just kind of lower you see how they start to uh, get left behind as we get to the brighter colors Now we're going to bring some of this scale color spring green into the Arati green to create a gradient and continue our highlights. Bombwick igniter brushes uh, from uh, Monument Hobbies. They're available uh, through their store at CreatureCaster.com. Uh, these are pretty fantastic brushes and they're, they're for a really good price. They also have a synthetic line. Uh, I think they're called Deckcord, but uh, I mean I'm just a sable guy. I've never had a good time with any synthetic, so, but I have not tried theirs. So, uh, I'm not saying anything bad about it. Uh, but this uh, Kalinsky Sable brush, the igniters that they, they make, uh, definitely really nice brushes and a really nice price. I, I think I found a new brush supplier. <laughs> One thing I want to point out at this moment, uh, when you're watching my tutorials, don't copy how I hold the model. Uh, I'm trying to maintain camera angles at the same time I have a camera in front of me and an overhead light about three inches from my face. <laughs> so uh, I do have to hold these models at very unnatural angles to get these shots. take a minute to talk about this wet palette because uh, you're seeing me add some water to it. Uh, this is the uh, Everlasting palette from uh, 
red grass games and uh, it's really dry in my place right now so I am having to add a lot of water to it but that's that would be true with any wet palette that's just because it's very dry in here This ridge here flanges out a bit, so I'm liking to give it a, a little extra attention. Plus, since it's got that concave uh, surface underneath it that's heavily shadowed, uh, this is going to make for some real dynamic highlighting to emphasize that ridge. Uh, now for these final highlights, we're going to add a little white uh, into the spring green. Now, Scale Color does have a uh, yet brighter green, but it's a little on the yellow side, and I don't want this thing looking like it's glowing like a light source itself, um, and it'll get a little too neon if I use the, the autumn green. So I'm using white to kind of pale out the highlight, whereas if I had used the autumn green, it would have much more of like a green lantern glow to it. And now just going through with some black, touching up uh, that handlebar area there. And uh, as we wrap this one up, I would like to take a moment to thank all our patrons over at Patreon that make these videos possible. And as always, please like and subscribe.